All right, I am intentionally not filming in the rest of my room. Like I have this whole thing set up just so you don't have to see the mess in my room and it's not aesthetically pleasing. So welcome to the aesthetically pleasing, pleasing corner above my bed in my room. If anyone is paying particular attention, you might notice that I cut my hair. I have not had my hair this short in 14 years, but I love it. Like it's so much easier to care of now and it actually like looks better this way than it ever did in a braid. I hope this is helpful. I came up with three different ways to think about choreography, specifically with flag, but honestly, this could work with anything. All right, thing one, what am, what's the order I'm doing this in? I have not written this down. We are going to write this down. Thing one is counting. This will sound elementary. When you're counting for choreography, the way that I figured out how to count for choreography and the way that I figured out it was very helpful was I took a song. Actually, it's Washington Post March, if anyone cares to watch. And honestly, depending upon when I post this, you may have already seen it because it's also on my channel <laughs> or it will be very soon. What I did with Washington Post March, that one's easy because it's in 4-4. Count it and then figure out um, a section and assign a hash mark to that section. This is what I came up with for Washington Post March. It's kind of weird looking, but if you see all the hash marks on it, every hash mark indicates eight counts. And it ended up that this song broke into 32 count segments. So after like counting out the whole song, then I broke it up into sections. So Washington Post March basically has three sections. The first section, there's 32 counts that then repeats. The second section, there's 32 counts that then repeats again, but it's softer, so you want your choreography to be a little bit different. And then the next section, it actually repeats three times. So I have this 32 counts, I do it again, and then there's this little 16 count thing that's stuck in the middle that I then have to figure out, okay, something different, you know, to do for the, the 16 counts. And then it goes back to the 32 counts, so I do the 32 counts again, and then I do that 16 count thing again, and I can use that again as well and repeat that. So the whole thing took two sections of choreography, but two sections of choreography fills up five total sections of the song. So that makes it really easy. All you have to do, you don't even have to listen to the music necessarily. As long as you know the counts, you can choreograph and that will make it easier and less stressful <laughs> personal experience to choreograph a song, especially when you're on a time constraint. The second method that I found is helpful, can be helpful, I don't know if this is helpful, but this is what I do a lot, <laughs> is feeling the music. This one is weird. Then you might find it really hard to do, and that's fine. I found it easier because for me, like my musical ear is really good, but my like strategic is not as good, which is why I only just discovered the counting method because I'm always trying to feel out the music and just do whatever comes to me. Well, sometimes it takes more structure than that, but the feeling method is definitely a thing, and it can be helpful. A good mix of these, I think, is the best. Your feeling method is what comes to the surface when you're like, oh, look, this is a big dramatic theme, and now there's a soft part. So my soft part, my no motions need to be smoother, longer, more graceful, more flowy. And then if it's really big and bombastic, you can do really sharp movements. If it's very intense, you want to do very big grand movements, lots of tossing, even running sometimes with your grand parts can be cool because if you have more than one, all of y'all running at the same time is really neat. The last one, the reason I put it last is it is definitely a last resort. It can be helpful, and if you are completely stressed out and don't know what to do, it can be very helpful. It takes a base level of skill, I guess, but once you hit that base level, then you can just do this whenever. That would be improv. <laughs> improv is weird, it can be hard, but I've definitely left the door open for improv before. Last year for 4th of July when I was choreographing Flag, I think I had the song a week and a half before I had to perform, and so I had to choreograph and practice in that week and a half, and at first I thought I was gonna have to teach it to somebody so I thought I had to have it all set ended up that I didn't have to teach it to somebody and they were not gonna do it with me and so I was doing it by myself and when I'm doing it by myself no one knows if I'm doing the wrong thing because <laughs> there's no standard I found that I was much less stressed when I was like you know what if I forget I it doesn't even matter what I do as long as you wave your flag around they don't care what you're doing they don't care whether it's an extension or pop toss they don't care if it's a pole hit or a turn or a barrel turn or whatever they just want to see your flag, especially since I was performing in church. It's not like it's a critical audience. They just think it's awesome. Improv is a good thing. And also, I think it's helpful to practice. If you just want to go out, turn on a song. Just do improv to a song every once in a while. I have videos of me just doing improv to a song for no reason. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope this video is not as long as it is right now because I'm bordering on 10 minutes and that would stink and I don't want to have to have you all watch 10 minutes of me rambling. And I hope it helped you all. I know that it definitely helped me to figure out these different methods. Stay classic and I'll See y'all next time. <laughs>
Also, it was really fun to film this video because, like, I can just, I can just do that now whenever I want to. Ah!